Greetings, my name is Mike and welcome to the video. So today let's look at the view model and live data components of Android Jetpack. First off, I wanted to start with the view model component and this is part of the MVVM design pattern. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail on that, you can read up yourself if you want to, but basically it's a design pattern that's obviously not specific to Android X or something. But a view model is basically just a class that your activity or fragment talks to and you put all the business logic and stuff into that view model to move it away from the activity and fragment, um, keeping them as simple as possible. That's what it comes down to and I'm going to show you how to implement a simple uh, view model here. First of all, I just wanted to take a look at uh, this demo app. Whoa, hold up. Um, it's me from the future. I'm actually busy editing this video now and I noticed that my recording software NVIDIA GeForce Experience decided not to capture my mouse cursor. Um, I've actually seen online that it's a big problem that a lot of people are experiencing now, so it's not a setting or anything that I've missed. There is no setting for it. It's just a new version decided to not capture my cursor anymore. <laughs> so there's not much I can do. Sorry about that. I'll have to just wait for a bug fix from them. But I just hope it's not going to be too disorientating for you or confusing like where I'm clicking around and you don't see my cursor. Um, hopefully it's alright. There's not much I can do as I said, so sorry about that, but enjoy. Now if I go into the view model sample here, you'll see it does a service call just to fetch a list of Pokemon and that's all it does. You can't click on anything and yeah, that's all there is. But the problem we have here is that if I rotate the device, you'll see that it has to do the surface call all over again, which is obviously not great and it's a very unpleasant experience for the user because all they did was rotate their phone and now they have to wait again for everything to be fetched again, which is not great. And the view model and live data components help us out a lot here to get rid of all of that ugliness. So first of all, I'm going to go to my build.gradle script here and I'm just going to paste in some dependencies as per usual. Now these will vary depending on what your project is, if you have Kotlin or Java only and if you're using KTX as well. So this is what I'm putting in for Kotlin and KTX. So you can do something similar, but I'd recommend checking the documentation which I've linked below for the correct dependencies for your setup. So I'll go and add those in and sync up the project, which hopefully shouldn't take too long. Now I'm going to go to my fragment and show you what I've got currently. At this moment in time, I'm not using a view model at all. So you can see I've got in on view created. I have a whole lot of async stuff like uh, using coroutines. Don't worry too much about that, but I'm basically going to a background thread here to fetch all the data from the repository. Then I'm switching back to the main thread and updating the view. Now with the idea with the view model component is we want to move as much of this as possible away from the fragment. So I've got a view model class here, which is empty. Inside here, I'm going to add a function called initialize, which is what I'm going to call from the fragment. I'm going to add a parameter that's called on success, which is going to be a lambda. And its only parameter is going to be the data that I've just fetched. So it's going to be a list of Pokemon, if I can write correctly. Nope. Again, yes, there we go. So that's what this function is going to look like. And in here, I will basically move all of that other code we saw just now into this method. And then I'm going to replace this view stuff with my callback. So I'm going to just say on success and invoke it with the data we got from the repository. And that's basically all we're going to be doing in here for now. I'm going to come back just now and add live data to it. But now I just need to update the fragment. I need to add a view model field, which is that view model type. And in here, how you would normally create it would be to say new view model, but we're not going to do that because that'll just lead to the same problem we had at the start where when you rotate the device, everything is recreated. Now Android has a view model kind of factory or view model provider that we can use instead. So I'm going to say equals view model provider providers dot of, and hopefully I can import it uh, if it will let me. And then inside here I say of this, which is the current activity or fragment dot get Whoops. And then you give it the class of your view model, which is view Pokemon view model. Like that. And one more thing is I need to make the view model actually extend the base view model that Android provides like that. I was a bit confused as to why it was still red. Now this is how you instantiate your view model. And when you rotate the device, Android will ensure that you get the same view model instance back from this method. So you don't have to worry about those um, always doing the service call again. And finally, I'm just going to say view model dot initialize. And then in here, I need to, I think I was hiding the progress bar. I was hiding the progress bar. And then I was setting the adapters items to what I get back from that Lambda. 
cool now that is pretty much how we can move the code away from the view into the view model if i just run this um, hopefully we should see the same behavior because we have not used live data yet but i'm expecting that we won't see any weirdness all right here we go starting up the app if I go to my view model sample, does a service call, which is cool, displays the stuff, hides the progress bar, when I rotate, it is still going to do the service call again. Now that is expected because if I go back to my code, every time initialize is called, I'm just doing a service call regardless. I'm not storing this data anywhere. So we are calling initialize in on view created, which happens every time. So that is expected, don't worry. But now I want to go ahead and add the live data component. Now, live data it just comes down to being a simple, observable data holder. That's all it comes down to. Now, that might seem like a mouthful, and it kind of is, but I will show you here what it looks like. So, now I'm going to just create a field that's like called Pokemon or something, and I'm going to assign it to my repository dot get as live data. I've implemented a method in my repo that returns live data. I'll show you just now. But that pretty much allows me to get rid of all of this other code because that's all taken care of in my repository. That's all you have. So you can see it's got a field of type live data which has a list of Pokemon inside. Then in my fragment, it's now red of course, but I can change this to say view model dot Pokemon dot observe. And I say this, which is the which is the lifecycle owner, which is gonna be your activity or fragment, and then you give it a lambda callback method thing which will be invoked when the data changes behind the scenes so i can move these two things up here into that callback and that's as simple as it is to use live data what's happening here is you're observing that data holder and you're saying when the data inside that holder changes please notify me inside this lambda and then you can do whatever you need to in here to update your view in my case i'm just going to hide the progress bar when we get some data and of course, I'm going to update the adapter to actually show that data. And that's how simple it is. Now, an important note here is that this observer is lifecycle aware because you're giving it the activity or fragment here. This means that you don't have to worry about the lifecycle anymore. For example, if the user presses back on the activity, but your service call is still going and it finishes and tries to update the view, you will have a crash if you're not using lifecycle aware stuff like this. So since we're passing in the fragment here, if you press back on activity and destroy the fragment, this callback won't happen because it sees, oh, the fragment is destroyed. We don't need to do anything. So it's pretty cool like that and removes a lot of boilerplate code for lifecycle management. Anyway, that being said, let's just run the app and we should see now that the data is only fetched once and when we rotate the device, it will not do a surface call again. I'm hoping. <laughs> okay, starting up, open my view model does the initial service call as expected, updates the view and stuff. Then if I rotate, look at that, no more service call anymore. How cool is that? And the user will not notice anything and will not be upset by the user experience of your app anymore. Okay, let's just see um, how that live data actually works a bit behind the scenes. So in my repository, I have this method called get all as live data, which you'll see the return type is a live data object. And it's inter internal type, whatever you want to say, is a list of Pokemon, right? This will be the data type that you care about. But for this purpose, I'm returning a list of Pokemon that I'm displaying. So that's what it's going to be. Then we start off by creating a new live data, a mutable live data object, again, of our same type here. And then we're going to do some coroutines here, which is basically going into a background thread. So we can pretty much just know that live data will be returned immediately here from this method. Then inside the separate little thread, I am calling the service here, which looks like this method above. I just have a fixed delay of a thousand milliseconds just to sort of emulate a long service call. Please don't ever do this. Um, but then we are basically just executing the retrofit service here in a blocking fashion, right? This, this call is blocking here, so it'll take a while to happen. And then when it eventually comes back, we will post a new value to our live data object. This is basically just updating the data within the live data object. That was a lot of data, but it's basically giving it a new value. Um, you can note that live data also has a set value function here, which I could use. Whoops. Nope. Which I could use like that. But the very important distinction between these two is that 
set value must be called if you're on the main thread and post value if you're on a background thread. You will get a crash at runtime if you try to call set value from a background thread. So since I'm obviously on a background thread and a coroutine, I'm going to say post value. And that literally just sets the new value within that live data to the list we just got back from the service. This will then trickle through to our fragment and it will come into our Lambda uh, method here to update the view with our new data that we've got back. So this is basically how it works behind the scenes. It's really simple and really straightforward. You just create a live data object somewhere. Typically it'll be a mutable live data and you return it to the view. And then at some point in the future, you can update that live data object with a post value to give it a new value, which will then notify your view in that a Lambda and you can update it as necessary. Pretty straightforward and really easy to do. So yeah, the live data and view model components are quite straightforward. They might seem a bit strange at first or a bit much to take in, but it's really straightforward. A view model is just a class where you put your business logic to move it away from the activity and fragment. And the live data object is just, as I said, an observable data holder. So your view can watch that live data object and then when it changes, update itself as necessary. Pretty, pretty cool, I think. And again, the important distinction here is that you're observing and it's lifecycle aware. So you won't get this callback if the activity or fragment has been destroyed, which, which can be a very problematic and very manual process to do yourself. So it's all taken care of for you. You don't have to worry about painful lifecycle management anymore. All right, before we finish off, I just wanted to show you a few ways that we can neaten up the code if you're using Kotlin and Android KTX, which I really recommend you do. Uh, first of all, I wanted to add a new dependency here, which is going to be the Android X fragment um, KTX extensions or library, whatever you wanted to call it. And I'm just going to sync that up. Then I can go to my fragment and I'm going to basically be cleaning up how we instantiate this view model. So right now we have a late init var field view model, which is not that great because you can kind of change it and you have to hope it has a value. Anyway, I can actually change this to be a val, right? val view model, which means it's immutable, of course. Now I can basically use um, delegation or whatever you want to call it to initialize this for us. I can say by view models. And then in here, I just give it the type of the view model. Now this is part of that dependency that we imported just now, and it will basically take care of all of this view model provider stuff for us. So I can literally just remove that there and pretty much as easy as that to get rid of a few lines of code and to neaten it up a bit. Now it's also nice because we know this view model field will always have a value because it's not late in it anymore and it will be immutable. So it's assigned once and you can't change it to something other, like other weird stuff. So if I just run that to show to you that it still works, installing view model sample, and there we go. We still have a view model to do a service call and it <laughs> works as expected. Nothing too crazy, but I am a big fan of cleaning up the code like this. And that's all I've got for this video. Actually, I hope that it was kind of helpful. I know it's, it might seem kind of basic, but I just wanted to sort of go through the basics of view models and live data in this video. So if you're not familiar with that all at all, <laughs> I hope that it's helped you out. Um, I know that there's other stuff I mentioned like coroutines, but I tried to just stay away from it, as I said, because I wanted to focus on these two things. Um, but please let me know if you, if you want to know more or maybe something was unclear. Maybe I can do a more in-depth video on this stuff at some other point in time, but I did see a few people asking for this in the comments, so thank you for that, I appreciate it, and I hope this has, has helped you out and, and made it a bit more clear about what's going on. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and cheers for now.